Hi everybody, and thanks for joining me today. So I will show you where we're working in the pattern, finishing up that uh, last uh, lower right hand uh, corner of the fountain. All the swans are done now. <laughs> so yeah, and then we're gonna sort of move further over into the uh, hedges and then the pillars, and then we'll be ready to do another pass across. <clears throat> yeah, so that'll be exciting. Yeah, so I said in my last video, I finally got my, um, my Morgan hoop shipment, which was supposed to be the stand with the two hoops where it's got a 10 inch on one side and a 14 inch on the other. And, um, yeah, instead they sent me one nine inch hoop. Like, I don't know how you get the order that mixed up. It wasn't even a 10 inch hoop or a 14 inch hoop, which would have at least been partially right. No, it was a nine inch hoop and just one. <laughs> no legs or second hoop or anything. So, oh dear. But I will say I contacted them, letting them know what had happened. And they immediately gave me a full refund as soon as they got the email message. So I emailed them in the evening. By the next morning, I had a, I had my refund. So, so there's that at least. And they didn't even require me to send back the, uh, the incorrect hoop. So, so not exactly what I wanted, but at least I got my money back. So yeah, I, um, I went and I ordered, uh, Oh, what have I done here? Oh, for Pete's sakes. Oh, I did something wrong, didn't I? Oh, no, I didn't. I was looking in the wrong area. Okay, whew. I was thinking, man, I messed up the first thread, <laughs> the first stitches at the beginning of this session. That doesn't bode well, but no, I didn't. Oh my gosh. I'll blame it on I've been having to get up earlier because of uh, my kiddo taking driver's ed, which is before the actual official school day starts. So, yeah. I am not a morning person, that is for sure. <laughs> I said, I'm glad my kid seems to not take after me in that. He almost never sleeps later than me. He's usually up by seven or eight, so. And luckily, at least now, he's old enough that uh, he doesn't need me around, right? He can, uh, it's not like when they're really little and they can't take care of themselves. He's old enough that, yeah, he can take care of his own breakfast and amusing himself without uh, needing me. So, <laughs> hmm. yeah, it's, it's nice when they're little, you know, you can pick them up and snuggle them and everything. And that's pretty darn sweet, but uh, they do need you a lot when they're, when they're little too. So, you know, people say you have to cherish every moment, but I mean, some of the moments, they are just, you know, they are not fun. They're frustrating, and you know what? That's okay. I mean, yeah, who's going to cherish it when you're being woken up in the middle of the night because they're hungry, right? That's not, that's not fun. <laughs> It's just that I think we tend to get nostalgic, right? When they're older. Yeah, be like, oh man, when you were so small and I could, I could carry you. <laughs> yeah, I had to stop doing that younger than I wanted to because uh, my bad back couldn't pick him up anymore without uh, being in severe pain the next day, sometimes even locked up. So yeah, it just was not going to happen. I said, pretty soon he'll be big enough to pick me up. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, I was pretty excited. Yesterday, I actually managed to get like an entire diagonal done. So like 600 stitches worth. 
that's always nice. I actually had some time. I could have started at the top of the next diagonal, but by then my brain was kind of kind of mush at that point. And I thought, now nah, I'll just mess it up. So I took a break and stitched some background on my firefly piece. So there's still a lot of that to go. <clears throat> Yeah, and then there's another one I have that um, I have planned. I'm gritting the fabric up right now. It's um, an Ocarina of Time one, and it's uh, it looks like a stained glass window, so it has tons of black background. It's like 170,000 stitches almost of uh, black. So that one will keep me busy for a while, I think. <sighs> Pardon me. That one was actually... Um, supposed to be 939 navy blue, but you, as I've mentioned before in previous videos, you cannot get 939 on a cone for some reason. You can get 310 black on a cone, and I think you can get 823, which is um, another navy blue, but it is a bit, um, I don't know how you would say it, not brighter, but it's like, almost like it has less black in it more more uh almost like a yellowy tone they're very similar but they're not quite the same and so i decided you know what black background works because um i had so much on the uh, firefly piece that i figured yeah i'll make them both lots of black backgrounds so there's that and then of course on my um marvelous garden piece the one that i messed up <laughs> and had to restart uh is a lot of white so yeah black or white right there's lots of uh background yeah I saw one where somebody did all of the white and then did the pattern I said well there's some dedication there especially since I think she was only working on the one project because I said yeah when I have huge areas of background I don't do it all at once because I would get bored and I'd never finish it so yeah I just save it for the times when I want to stitch without having to concentrate so hard I think I got a tiny knot on this. Yeah, a little bit. Oh well. It's not big enough that it's going to distort my holes, so I'm going to just keep stitching with it. No one will know in the end. Yeah, I had one time where the knot was really big and it was really hard to pull through the holes. And I thought, oh, I'll just keep going. And then the holes ended up, um, like I said, larger than the others and distorted. And you could see where it was. It was like, oops. So, yeah. But when it's a teeny tiny one, sometimes you can get away with it. So. Hmm. 648. Yeah, so we've almost run out of stuff to watch on Prime. Apart from, of course, the new episodes of new shows that are coming out lately. But um, I said, yeah, but the good thing is um, everything is is uh, premiering now. Right around this time, too, so no problem. <laughs> yeah, the new fall season of stuff, so... Yeah, because um, my Prime membership expires in January, and I'm going to let it lapse, and then we'll pick something else. Probably Netflix, or maybe Crave, we'll see. I have uh, lists of what I'm going to watch where, so yeah, as I said, I'm cheap, and I don't want to pay for more than one uh, streaming service at a time. I'd rather pay for one, watch everything we want to watch on there, cancel it, then pay for a different one I mean because we're already paying for um well I guess you can't really call it cable now because it's fiber optic but we're paying or I used to call it satellite because that's what we went with before but yeah we're still paying for the regular like 
global CBC, CTV, you know, so that we can see all our primetime shows, NBC, that kind of thing for, yeah, like Law and & Order and Murdoch Mysteries and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, which I know you can get the stack TV and watch it through whatever streaming, but yeah, I kind of like permanently having the uh, optic. <laughs> We'll see if we'll take a break for a while from paying for streaming because uh, I got some stuff queued up on um, Tubi TV, which is free. You just have to watch ads when you watch it. So I got some stuff on there. So yeah, I guess it's not like when we were kids when oh man, there's nothing on. <laughs> there's always something somewhere. That's for sure. It's now. Too many shows and not enough time. Uh. Yeah, we haven't done like Disney Plus yet because um, my TV doesn't seem to want to have an app for it. It has an app for Prime or it has for Netflix, has for Hey You, but not Disney. So, I mean, I'm sure there's probably a way on a smart TV, but I'm not that tech savvy. <laughs> Yeah, my husband does want to see the new uh, Star Wars stuff. I'm not a huge Star Wars fan. But I mean, I've watched it. I'm a Star Trek person, but I mean, you can like both. Just don't pretend they're the same thing. Yeah, that makes all of us mad. <laughs> oh. They're not the same. Actually, I quite like in the sci-fi world, they often will give little tributes and stuff to each other. So that's quite uh, quite fun. Like there was on um, Red Dwarf, um, which is a um, British sci-fi comedy series from the 80s, 90s, although they've done some stuff more recently, but very, very funny. Um, very, very, um, what's the word I'll say? Uh, not safe for work, I guess. Like, yeah, very, um, adult jokes in a lot of places, but hilarious. And, um, yeah, they had one where, um, the one who's a mechanoid, he says, um, cause they're all trying to protect him. And uh, he says, you know, but you will not profit by it. He says, you would risk your lives to protect me. Is this a human value you call friendship? And then one of the other guys says, oh, oh, you know, don't give me that Star Trek crap. It's too early in the morning. <laughs> so, yeah, that definitely gave me a giggle. Mm. Yeah, we actually started watching it when I was in high school because um, uh, PBS actually would have uh, marathons. Back when they did that, I don't know if they still do that anymore, where they would have the pledge drives and marathons of stuff. So in between the episodes or whatever, they would then, you know, please call us. And if you pledge this much, we'll send you, you know, like back then VHS tape or whatever, like they had, um, they would have uh, faulty towers marathons. And uh, yeah, if you pledged them, you know, it was like 50 or a hundred dollars, then you'd get the set on VHS and such. So obviously it's, you know, marked up quite a bit but uh, that's your way of donating, right? And you get something to show for it. So yeah, we would, um, when those marathons came on, we would record them on VHS so we could watch them again later. Yeah, I don't know if they do that anymore. Yeah, I like a lot of stuff they show on PBS. It's a little more expensive, I find, a lot of them, but well done. Like, they did the um, Poldark series, which was um, based on a series of novels. And, uh, yeah, so, like, you'd get, say, you know, six or eight episodes in a season, and it would cost you, like, $45, $50. So definitely more than you're paying for a lot of others. But, uh, of course, like they say, that's because it's a 
mostly public it's you know publicly funded and they don't get as much of a budget and a lot of their um period pieces are just incredible the costuming and the set design and everything and yeah i'm willing to pay a bit more for some quality programming yeah i liked that uh I like that series, although I said at times it was kind of almost depressing because the um, the main character, he, he fights, he's a champion for the poor, you know, and it's set in the oh, 1700s, I think. I'll have to look it up again, but I think from the fashion they were wearing, it was 1700s, um, Cornwall. And it was kind of frustrating because you'd watch it and it's like, man, we are still having those same, you know, those same fights today, like not much has changed. Oh, and yeah, that character could be really stubborn and you wanted to just, you know, thump him one at times, but uh, definitely kept you interested, that's for sure. Okay. I'm going to leave that one threaded because it's sort of right on the edge of the diagonal. It's the last one in this section. And then I can end the thread. So I might as well, rather than leaving it for the next um, diagonal, and having to re-thread it and then end it off. So that is why I chose that. So yeah, the colors here are kind of going opposite because of the, uh, the part of the design here. Oh, was that? No, it wasn't. Okay. So fine, that can result in a changing threads a little more often, but as I leave things threaded as much as possible, it really doesn't change, take that much more time, I find. Okay, uh, this one is too short to really park anywhere, so I'm going to end it off. Yeah, so we are definitely well into fall here, even if the calendar doesn't think so yet. Yeah, a lot of leaves on the ground during my walk this morning. Oh, I could feel that it didn't go down quite in the hole because there was too much resistance when I pushed that needle through. Yeah, no frost in the mornings yet, but uh, that will not be far off. Only a few degrees above freezing in the morning, so. Yeah, when you have to add extra time to your uh, your commute in the morning because you need to include the time it takes to defrost your, uh, your windshield. Uh, 
Yeah, I saw one where some guy was like throwing hot water or whatever on his windshield. And I was just like, eek, dude. I mean, yeah, that'll break the ice, but if you don't watch, that could break the glass too. Oh dear. Yeah, or they had this one ice scraper tool I saw a uh, an ad for that was like this kind of dome shape. So the problem is though, there's no like handle on it. So you have to be able to reach that far and I'm short. <laughs> my arms are not that long. I, I won't be able to reach the middle of my windshield. <laughs> I need one of those um telescoping ice scraper things. <laughs> There's going to be more than one thread of hair of this color, but that's fine. rushing to finish up any road work they can before the uh, the first snow flies, so. Yeah, it came up in my Facebook memories the other day that we already had snow one year, so. Thankfully, touch wood, it hasn't been uh, that cold this year yet. Usually the first few snows don't stick though, so. so yeah, some of them only stick for like a couple of hours and then they melt but uh yeah sort of just enough to make a mess of the roads uh i hate the first week or two after the first snowfall because i swear everybody's forgotten how to drive on ice from the summer and yeah there's more accidents so yeah i just have to build a little extra commute time there too Yeah, I hope it doesn't get too cold too soon because I prefer to take my walk outside rather than using my machine. Okay, so we got another thread down this way. Mm -hmm. Oh dear. It's a little slower going. Oh dear. There. Thread was stuck to my hand. <laughs> so we're still a little dry from having made the uh, the juice. I know I did wear gloves, but you can't protect them entirely, so. Yeah, so I was saying earlier about that hoop stand, so I ordered a different one from eBay, so hopefully they send me the right uh, the right thing. Yeah, because the thing is, the lap stand I have right now, because it's held by a clamp on one side, it keeps slipping all the time and the work falls as you're working on it. It's so annoying. And uh, even the ruler fix I used for my my floor stand just didn't work for that, so... Yeah, I saw a lot of people using these hoop stands, so I'm going to give that a try. Yeah, it 
it'll turn out I'll have spent more on lap stands than I did on the my big floor stand, which is funny. Because, yeah, got my floor stand from Michael's, so... And I got it when I had a half-off coupon, so I got a really good deal on it. And then I just had to replace the bolts with like $5 worth of better ones that I got from the hardware store because the ones that came with it were not good. So. <sighs> and my little ruler fix too to keep the Q-snap from rolling in it since the edges are round, not flat like a, um, a hoop is. So that could be my problem with the uh, lap stand I have as well because it's a Q-snap. It's PVC pipe, so the edges are rounded and yeah, it tends to roll more easily. That's the one drawback, unfortunately. I like the Q-snap because um, I like it gets it very taut without leaving any holes because I had that once with a um, with a hoop I used. I put it on, it was too tight and it actually put holes in my fabric. Uh, thankfully they were tiny enough that I was able to fix them, but yeah, that was not good. So the Q-snap won't leave holes and um, and I like the square shape because I find with the round hoop, I am always um, sort of going right up to the edge and running out of space by like a couple of stitches. It's so irritating. And if I put the hoop sort of far enough that it didn't cut off the edges, then I didn't have much of the middle area to work with. So I was having to, to move the frame around more often and that's irritating too. So yeah, pros and cons, right? Goodness me, ugh. Dropping needles everywhere. <laughs> no, that one just was too short. Would not stay threaded, but that's okay. I've only got two more and then I'm done with it anyway.
Okay, I may end up doing some stuff out of order here, I can see, or I may not. It just depends on if I decide multiple threads of a color is worth it or not, which I think I might do, mm -hmm. because, yeah, I kind of have two paths going there anyway, and I've got lots of at this point in my work, I've got lots of little pieces everywhere and I'm good for, you know, three or four stitches, so I might as well use them up. multiple bits here. That's okay. Yeah, because it starts to sort of spread apart and I don't like crossing back and forth. Uses up more threads, so. Just use two of them. And 83,000 stitches, so I wonder, will I hit 200,000 by the end of this month? Maybe not. Yeah, maybe more like by the end of next month, I think. Yeah, it's funny because when I said one time I posted on Facebook, you know, I hit 100,000 stitches a day. Somebody's like, you'd have had 100,000 stitches in a day? I said, no, no, no. I hit a total of 100,000 stitches today. No, I wish. Could you imagine if you could do 100,000 stitches in a day? Yeah. Maybe then some people could actually get through their, uh, their stash of patterns because there's people like, oh, no, I have 73 full coverage pieces. I'll never do them all. Ugh. But as I've often said, um, Collecting your craft supplies and actually using them are different hobbies. I think, uh, yeah. Collecting them is your magpie brain. <laughs> Says, ooh, collect all the shiny things. And then uh, I think it's a different part of your brain that likes to actually make them into stuff. Teeny knots, so. so 
accidentally unthreaded my needle there. Goodness, I was kind of stuck there. out of the diagonal. This is still threaded, so I am going to do, yeah, these three here around this edge. Didn't want to come up neatly between those other threads already in that hole because there's three already there so I just went the other way and went down. That kind of helps hold it in in place a little more neatly instead of getting kind of a tug of war going between the uh, the two threads going in opposite directions, one going down and one going up. So make them all go in a downward direction. You don't end up with the opposing forces. Opposing forces there. I was pulling an end up to the wrong side. I hate when that happens. Okay, there. I was just making sure there was no knots back there that were going to cause me, give me grief later. Okay, so you're out of the way. Yeah, slower going. We're not quite at a hundred stitches done this morning, but that's okay. We will get there.
remember correctly, this is a shorter piece, so. Yes. Oh my gosh, if I could separate them there. Hmm. Still long enough for a couple of stitches, so what I'm gonna actually do is Put it right, park it right here, where there's a couple sort of by themselves to the side there. Yeah, then I won't have to join a new thread when I'm doing that diagonal. That'll be one right there. Threaded and I didn't realize it. <laughs> I thought I had uh, caught it on my finger, but I thought it was still threaded a little bit. It was not. I was mistaken. There. Okay. look at what else is close by. All right, so there is one over to the right. It's still within an inch, so I'm going to carry this rather than ending it. I always prefer to park rather than end if I can, because that uh, saves me from joining a new piece later. I find the, um, it's the attaching new threads to the to the work that actually takes me the longest, I find. So sometimes when there's a whole bunch of threads sort of parked in one area, it looks really intimidating, but it actually goes fairly quickly once the needles are threaded because, yeah, we're just switching threads, but they're already attached. It's the, yeah, pulling out a new thread, folding in half to make a loop start, threading it through your needle, getting it attached to the piece, that takes the longest. Man, these gray colors, I'm just blowing through them. <laughs> yeah, that's why I have so many, so many skins. Oh. So let's see what we've got here. We have got a lot of this color. 
yeah, I can see I'm going to end up with a few threads here, I think. Because <laughs> I've got a lot of this color and they're all kind of going this way instead of this way. So that's all right. I don't mind. my gosh. Oh, I got something going on there. See, I got a loop or something on the back here, so I gotta figure out where it's from. I think it's from this working thread here. Yeah, it happens sometimes. Yeah, that's where it's snagged right there. Okay, yeah. caught it on itself and left a, a loop on the back where it shouldn't be, so fortunately I found it right away. It's one thing I like with the two-handed stitching too because I have one hand on each side. I'm more likely to feel it than when I was traveling my hand back and forth from the front to the back. So yeah, that's a big part of the reason why I switched. I also found it was easier to use a bigger frame because when I was moving my hand from the front to the back and back again, I, um, if I had a big frame, I kept on smacking my hand into the frame, which made it unwieldy. So I couldn't use a 17 inch frame. A 17 by 17 is still too big for me, I find. It ends up that the work is just too far away. I'm having to have work with my arms like stretched way out in front of me to work the top bit so that I don't like. You see, I kind of look, they make um, a Q-snap style, like a quilting frame, which I looked into, because I mean, it has a nice big working area, but then the problem is the working area is almost too big. So, so it works. I mean, it's like I said, it's made for quilts, not cross stitch, which makes sense that you need a, a bigger working area for quilting than you do for for cross stitch so yeah and it wasn't cheap either so <laughs> yeah I tried a 17 by 17 inch Q-snap but yeah that was too big so this one was like 30 by 40 or something you know while like that and it's like yeah no that's way too big it was actually designed so that also so that two people could use it like one on each side so yeah definitely way too big for one person on a cross stitch at least for me anyway I decided against it. Okay, good. We passed a hundred. Okay.
Oh, well, we're past 100 now. Yeah, I was thinking, I don't use the take the snake method, method technically when people go back and forth, but I guess it kind of almost works out that way sometimes because you have to go sort of this way and work your way back, then this way and work your way back there sometimes. That's just the way the colors turn out, so it can get kind of snaky sometimes. So this one, I left threaded, but actually I'm going to unthread it because, yeah. It's so close. And sort of glancing at the other colors, the way I would have to fill in to do those two in a row would be just kind of annoying. So I'll leave it for the next diagonal and do it then. Okay. This one, too. Ah, that one was already unthreaded, so I was thinking ahead. So I was saying that I'm running out of things to watch on Prime, but I like to rewatch stuff, so I still have a bit. <laughs> Finishing ER, and then I might rewatch Cold Case. I saw the whole series, but like, it's been, geez, I'm trying to think how long it's been. A dozen years? Yeah, I think it ended in like 2010 or something, so it's been a while. And that was one they never put out on DVD because um, it was a case of the songs that they used. They got the broadcast rights, but not the um, distribution rights because at the time they were making it, it wasn't, it hadn't really caught on yet of buying TV shows to own them. And uh, distribution rights are a lot more expensive than just broadcast rights. So yeah, some of the shows there that sort of came out at the same time, but they didn't. And then securing the uh, broad or the distribution rights now would be cost prohibitive. Cause yeah, I was, there were people saying like, why can't you buy the Wonder Years on DVD? And that's why. 
And uh, yeah, same with the cold case. And especially with the cold case, the music is such like an essential part of the storytelling because of course they will, it has them investigating in the modern day and then it'll do the flashbacks to when the crime actually occurred. And almost every segment will have some song from that year playing that has something to do with the story. Like I remember there was one where showed mom was working and uh, for some reason her babysitting fell through and she had to bring her uh, her infant to the meeting with her. Um, you know, trying to give a, me a presentation in the boardroom with a baby on your hip. And, uh, you know, she tried to, she was doing it. And then, um, so the music they picked was She's Got to Be Somebody's Baby, which of course, you know, fits with the scene. And yeah, so they're saying like, if they wanted to do it without getting the distribution rights, they could take the music out. But the music was like another character almost in the telling of the story. So yeah, they kind of, they kind of couldn't do that. It would, it would kind of wreck it. So <laughs> yeah. So yeah, now it's on streaming, which I'm guessing counts as like broadcast rights rather than rather than um, distribution would be my guess. Since people can't keep it, they can only, you know, stream it. So yeah, that would be my guess. I'm no expert or anything. <laughs> So yeah, I kind of want to see if I can squeeze in a rewatch of that before I, uh, before my, uh, my, uh, oops, what happened there? Oh, goodness. What? Oh my gosh. It snagged this thread here. That was weird. Okay, let's pull these out and see how that looks. Better? Yeah, I think that's good now. Okay. Yeah, I remember they made a reference to uh, Cold Case on um, Law & Order SVU because um, one of the stars, Danny Pino, he, he joined them for a couple of seasons. And they ended up looking at some older case and then he said, yeah, you know, cold, something like a, yeah, cold case is where it's at or something. Because, yeah, he was on uh, that show. So, yeah, that was funny. I like when they do those little, little sort of winks to, uh, to real life stuff. Just trim my nails. <laughs> Have a harder time grabbing the uh, the needles there. Oh, 
Oh, no, hang on a minute. I think I did that wrong. Yes, I did. Yeah, I was parking it based on other threads and I looked at the wrong thread. Then when I looked compared to the grid line, something did not match up. So fortunately, I found it right away. Although, yeah, if you've watched this uh, channel for any significant amount of time, you will have seen that, yeah, I've parked things incorrectly before and had to figure out what I was doing, what past me did. Goodness, I think I'm threading my needles today by accident. That's rather frustrating. Pardon me. Mm. Ah, well, driver's ed is only six weeks. <laughs> and then, uh, then I won't have to get up quite so early in the mornings. <laughs> Okay, well that gives me a nice even number, 150 stitches. So I think that will be my stopping place for now. And as usual, uh, thank you so much for joining me and I hope to see you here again another time. All right, thanks everyone. Bye.